Cool. All right. We are here with Tyler Showstrom, and uh, we're talking with him as part of the Play It Forward campaign to uh, help artists who have been financially impacted during the coronavirus. Uh, so I guess let's just start out and tell tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're at, how you got into music. Sure. Yeah. So. Um... I am just outside Chicago in the suburbs, um, and I pretty much grew up here. I'm in St. Charles right now. It's the suburb where I'm, I'm at, and uh, this is where I grew up. I've been kind of in other places uh, in the last few years, but this is where I'm at right now. And um, I started playing music. Um, well, I started doing music when I was a kid. I, I did piano lessons as a kid, and um, did those for a few years until uh, I told my parents that I'd run away if I had to keep learning. Um, so they let me quit. <laughs> and then I picked up trumpet in middle school and uh, another thing I quit. And then I decided to pick up a guitar in high school. And that's uh, just kind of informally started playing it and uh, played, picked around on that and started learning that on my own and then did a few lessons here and there and then started playing the piano again on my own. And that kind of just led me into some songwriting, some really basic stuff right out of high school. Um, and then it wasn't until probably six years ago when I moved, six or seven years ago, I moved down to uh, Lexington, Kentucky. And I was living with a best friend of mine uh, and another roommate and didn't really have any other friends outside of those guys. And so my guitar and my keyboard became kind of my best friends. And I just started making some songs up, um, had a lot of inspiration, uh, with uh, like the national forest nearby, which was the Daniel Boone National Forest and the Red River Gorge. And so um, Red River was one of the first songs that I started writing about. And that was the, one of the, the singles off my first record, um, which I think I released five years ago now. And so, um, yeah, I, I started writing music in Kentucky and then I came back up this way maybe a year later and some friends were like, hey, you need to, you need to make an album. And so they kind of had a, uh, uh, they basically forced me to make a Kickstarter and then did that and that was <laughs> successful. And then everything else has kind of been just kind of a domino effect after that. So yeah, that's kind of the, the, the yeah, spark notes version of how I became a, a musician. Yeah. Yeah. So did along the way, I mean, what was like the thing that really got you into music in the first place? What was the inspiration or the motivation to do that? Well, um, I think everyone, you know, everyone connects with music in some way. Um, and uh, for me, it was, it was kind of an inescapable connection. Um, I was always like really moved by music. Um, and I think that was um, something that I wanted to partake in is kind of, um, yeah, moving people through words and through melodies um, and having them kind of hear a song and uh, put them in a place uh, or a certain emotional mood or something like that. You know, we always have those songs that uh, we listen to and it brings us back to a certain time or a place and we're like, oh man, I love that. That's the nostalgic kind of uh, feeling. And so, uh, yeah, the, just having those moments with specific artists or songs really pushed me to to do that. And some of like the early influences for me were kind of that folk pop thing that happened like a decade ago, like Mumford and Sons. A lot of people hear that in my voice or um, the tallest man on earth is another guy. He's a Swedish dude. And um, and then like David Ramirez out of Austin, Texas. So kind of like the... <clears throat> folk pop a little bit of country vibes and then johnny cash even before that was a huge influence on me uh, just songwriting and his life so uh yeah i just wanted to be i want to be a part of that and and kind of always wanted to and always have those um moments of imposter syndrome where uh uh you know i'm playing and, and then i and then i'll hear a song by nathaniel rateliff who was a huge influence of mine i'm like I'll never be like that or anything like that. It's a struggle, you know, being an artist and uh, and always thinking that you could be better and uh, there are always better people out there. But I think uh, even especially in a time like this, artists of any caliber really need to get their stuff out there um, because this is a time where people are going through a whole lot of a lot of stuff. And I think music and, and just art in general is really going to ground us. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, man, I hear you. It's it's crazy, and and the thing is, is like, and just a lot of the things you said, you know, were just kind of reminding me, like the fact that you don't know, like you don't know what the future is going to hold. I mean, right. like, I'll share a personal story with you. I know this is an interview with you, but I mean, just so ten years ago, I got married. My wife and I got married, and Nathaniel Rayleigh played our wedding. Like, wow. And so, like, but at the time, he was ready to quit music. Like, he was just like fed up with the whole situation and like he didn't know he didn't know that like you know just like a couple years later he was going to be popular you know he'd been trying for years and years and years and then all of a sudden like you know it things changed he, he did a new project and like that somehow had more appeal or a different appeal or whatever it was that that really just kind of took him you know to that next level and uh and it kind of it reminds me of like the situation we're in now where it's like, you don't know, like, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> and we're just doing what we can. You know what I mean? I think at all, at some points we all feel like imposters and yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. That's wow. That's a uh, really uh, inspiring and encouraging actually to hear, hear a story like that. Um, yeah. And I had, I had some friends that were kind of pals with him and, um, knew him through Gregory Allen Isaacoff and uh, yeah it's seeing that like you almost in the limelight kind of thing almost like getting to the point where it feels like he's you know you're on the, you're on the brink of something but it's always on the brink and that's kind of how I've been feeling too so it's 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 a struggle and and now having all of this is just it's just another thing you're like was the universe trying to tell me or collectively all of us that we just need to stop I'm like of course it's not like this is definitely the time to keep going and keep pushing um yeah it's uh but that's yeah that's a really that's a really cool story thanks for sharing yeah man yeah no that's cool so you you have connections with sweden right where have you been to sweden are you what can the, you kind of go into a little bit of that yeah, it's not very far. It won't be a, that much content, but uh, I'm, yeah, my dad is 100% Swedish, but he only visited Sweden actually for the first time this last year. My grandmother, on the other hand, had visited a number of times. I think we, I'm a couple generations removed from uh, like my ancestors who immigrated uh, here, um, but they all kind of immigrated and moved up to Wisconsin. So there's this one little town in the middle of nowhere in Wisconsin called Ogema. And I'm probably related to 99% of the people that live there. And there's probably only 60 people that live there. So it's not a whole lot. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I'm Swedish. Uh, other than a few traditions here and there, I don't really do a whole lot of stuff that's Swedish per se. I don't speak any Swedish, but it's definitely a place that I, I want to get to. A, you know, it's a bucket list item to get over to the motherland. Um, and uh, yeah, but other than my name, there's not a whole lot of Swedish about me. I don't even look Swedish. I got dark hair, brown eyes. But, I, I yeah. hear you, man. No, I, and I, I have Swedish roots also. And actually, so where, where we're going to be doing uh, the live streams from for this is in a place called Bishop Hill, which is a, a Swedish right. colony. Um, oh, very cool. It's, it's kind of unfortunate that everything is kind of closed right now, but it's, it's like this, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really cool historic site that, Hopefully, you know, you can come and visit sometime because there's a lot of history. Um, yeah. It's basically preserved from the time when uh, the original settlers came from Sweden and, and, and uh, set up shop there. So it's, it's, a, it's a cool place. Oh, wow. Now I'm really excited to get down there. That'll be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'll, you can see a little bit, but uh, most of the museums and stuff are closed. Right. Um, you know, that's just how it yeah. is. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Crazy. Very cool. So uh, I guess, you know, it looked like I, I've read your bio and kind of just did a little bit of research on, on who you are so I can ask some decent questions, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it looked like you, you, know, you, were, you were kind of uh, on an upward trajectory as far as, you know, what you were trying to do and where you're trying to go with music. Um, you know, what, what was your life like, I guess, before all this happened and what were you thinking was kind of coming next? Yeah. So, yeah, this uh, it hit hit kind of at an interesting point, and it's a little unfortunate, but you know, you work with what what happens and what you get. So, uh, right, basically, right when 
Well, uh, basically when South by Southwest, which was the first festival that was really canceled due to all this, um, I was finishing up final vocals for an album that I've been working on for the last year. Um, and I also had a showcase at South by Southwest that was booked. And so right in the middle, I was tracking these vocals. And, you know, you, when you're when you're in the studio, it's a whole whole thing. You, you're you really trying to get into the to the pieces and really get the emotion out that you want to basically fit with the songs and all that. And um, I got a which was a, it was just a bad idea. But I picked up my phone to look at if I had any messages while I was tracking vocals. And uh, some I think it was either my my dad or my my brother had texted me south by southwest is canceled and not like oh all the energy just drained out and i was like oh i gotta i gotta i told the the sound engineer i'm like i gotta take a break you know this this kind of hit me like a ton of bricks um because i'd never played south by southwest and it was going to be a sweet opportunity you just i mean it's one of the biggest music festivals uh in, in the states um maybe maybe around the world um so it was yeah it was a little bit it was a little tragic um but uh but yeah so i was i we finished the vocals and they sound great so the album is still in the works it's a little bit of uh, on a hiatus just with uh everyone having to kind of shelter at home and studio is not really running and uh all that but it's it's pretty much done um so i'll have an album either by the end of the year or beginning of next year um i guess it all kind of depends on uh you know, I have a little bit of a team behind me with that. So we're kind of deciding um, what's the best approach and strategy, especially considering all venues are just not operating for the foreseeable future. And even when they do start running, um, you know, we have no idea what that's going to look like. So, you know, we're taking that all into account and seeing what's the best way <laughs> to release this thing. Um, and with that, you know, I was, we, me and my wife uh, have been kind of in between things, deciding what we want to do next. We have two little kids, a, a four month old and a three year old. Um, and we were playing around with doing full time RV living and, and playing music around the States, basically touring that album and then just seeing kind of what comes with it. But with with this, with, you know, we've we've put a back burner on that, and so uh, again, we're kind of deciding what's next uh, with that. Um, but uh, in the meantime, I'm I'm still making music. Uh, if people were to check out my like Spotify profile, they'll see that most of the top songs I have are EDM like pop songs, which is a strange thing. It's kind of a weird uh, <laughs> dynamic that I have, but um, you know the music that I play live and the music that you're probably wanting to hear me play is Americana and folk. And it's, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and I don't perform any of this EDM stuff live, but, uh, so it's kind of a funny, weird thing that I have. Like I'll play live and people are like, Oh, I like, I like the sound of that guy. Let me check him out on Spotify. And then they'll be hearing this like, mm -ts, mm -ts, mm -ts, like four on the floor <laughs> dance beat. And I'm like, oh, darn, I should have had a different moniker for that. But I, lo and behold, this is where I'm at. But, um, all to say is, you know, I'm keeping busy writing music uh, for my original stuff, but also writing for these um, basically dance producers in Europe. That's kind of my side hustle. Um, and another fun thing that I like to do on the side. And um, so, yeah, th that's what I can do down here in the basement in this dark dungeon is, is sit in my pajamas and write fun little dance beats and hooks and all that. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of... I, putting my eggs in a lot of baskets, trying to see what I can do, especially during this, uh, as a musician, you know, I want to be able to, um, utilize the talents that I've been given and, and the, the skills that I've been, you know, learning through production and just songwriting. And, and I'm, I'm doing that both with my original stuff, which is Americana folk, as I said, as well as with this like EDM pop stuff. So yeah, I, I like to, I like to, to be in a lot of different, um, places as it were at once <laughs> but yeah so th that's the trajectory is hopefully within the next year at least releasing that album and really pushing hard on it uh, it's already like it's really raw it's a really raw album it was uh, a lot of it was written um uh in the you know la the years between my last uh ep and now and that there was a lot of hard stuff that i was going through um and uh yeah, it's just, it's going to be really raw and it's going to be, I think it's good. It's going to be a good album. It already sounds great. And I'm excited for people to hear it. So, yeah. 
Very cool, man. So are you, uh, I mean, it did, had, I guess leading up to this, were you doing a lot of touring, a lot of performing, uh, or, or had you kind of been just in like the, the writing mode for a while? And what, uh, what did that look like? Yeah, I kind of took a break from um, playing out. I haven't really done any like proper tours, na like nationwide. I've I've done a lot of stuff around Chicago and the Midwest. I've done some. I've, I've opened for bands like Joseph, which are which is a trio of amazing women out of Oregon. Um, opened for some other great people like uh, the Secret Sisters and all that in Chicago. And uh, yeah, just uh, have played around. Um, but I put a kind of a, a stop on that one when uh, my little one, the first one, so three about three years ago, I kind of put a hold on that. So when Bodhi came, I kind of pushed harder on the the songwriting and doing that as a kind of a gig. Um, and so basically leading up to this album, um, me and this little team have been basically, we were booking shows um, and then, you know, all of them got canceled. So uh so that's yeah that was that was a bummer that was the plan so it was basically to get back in it and uh really promote this next album through even tiny shows you know house shows and all that um i think that's how we kind of first got uh acquainted was i was reaching out to just kind of get some get some shows in the area and while and in in just basically the general midwest and and outward from there um so yeah, a lot of it was building up to this album release, um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna approach it in a different way, and we'll see how that goes. People still want music, even if they can't go to a show, so we'll see how um, it all plays out. So, what are the plans right now for releasing the album? Is it just totally on hold? Like, yeah, it's it's uh, on hold. We it, basically. Um, it's well it's still uh it's not finished yet so there's still a few things most of it is tracked all the instrumentation is tracked my vocals i think the last stuff we want to do is some basically like backgrounds maybe choruses choir stuff um and then mixing and mastering uh but in the meantime uh we we've done some like photo shoots and a little bit of like live video stuff and so really just trying to organize all of that so that when we do have a better idea of what the next month's year will look like as far as how music is going to work, because right now it's so uncertain, just like everything else. Like a lot of people's jobs are uncertain. Like the job that I had, that was kind of my consistent job. You know, I'm unemployed from that. And then I'm, so I'm, I'm doing full-time music right now, which is a dream, but not necessarily in this uh, world. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so it's definitely still on um, a hiatus to a certain degree. Everything is still being worked for the release, for the uh, eventual release. Um, but yeah, we don't want to necessarily uh, say this is how we're going to do it if, you know, in the next month things completely change globally or, you know, nationally. It's just, it's so uncertain. So um, kind of just waiting kind of like a lot of every everyone else in so many different facets of of our economy right now so but in the meantime i'm making music so it's not it's not a seem trying to see the positive in it so there we go yeah that's awesome man very cool are you uh are you playing with any other groups or are you just kind of doing a solo thing or yeah, I mean, uh, for the last three years, I've, it's really been solo. Even me playing out, it's been solo stuff. Um, with the record, we definitely would. We're, we're ho we were hoping to have like some utility players um, on the record, but it is kind of a solo gig for me um, until it, it, we can pick it up, and then of course a band is the dream. Having a dream band that you know really rolls with uh, the punches and everything. Uh, but yeah, it's been pretty solo and, um, but it's that what's nice about right now is, uh, that kind of, um, collaboration is, is happening on these really cool levels of, you know, we, we have this technology that we can collaborate with all the time and we rarely use it, or at least I don't. Um, and so it's been a kind of a cool time to collaborate with people and, if I can write these songs and these people can put together these tracks or you're great at 
putting down a beat, throwing down some bass, and I can do the rest. So that's been kind of fun. I've been I've been trying to connect with some artist friends that I knew were talented. I've just never reached out um, to be like, hey, let's play around with something. But we all got time now, so it's there's not really any excuses. That's cool, man. Have you done any live streams or anything like that? Yeah, I've done a, I've done a few. I did a few at a friend's coffee shop in Wheaton, um, kind of right off the bat when this thing was going down, and um, I had shows canceled that were like a week out, and so that was a bummer. So I was like, you know what? Let's just let's put together a, a live stream. So we did. A, I think I did two of those, um, and then I did one here. Um, and then I have actually, I think I have one this, this week, um, that was for a festival out East somewhere that was canceled. And so they're putting the whole thing online. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, and definitely plan on doing some more. Um, I mean, you can do it with, with your pants off and no one will know. So it's an easy <laughs> thing to do from home. So I need to get on that a little bit more just because. I just picked up the guitar right before uh, we started chatting um, because I haven't really played. I haven't played the gu acoustic guitar in so long. I've been just sitting here singing into this microphone and playing on this keyboard that you can't see. So my fingers need, I need to rough up my fingers again before I can, um, you know, get to playing down at the Bishop Hill uh, and everything. So, uh, but yeah, definitely been doing some live streams and looking forward to some more. Yeah. Is that, is that kind of awkward or how, like, have you found it? is pretty good like how how do you uh, i know some people are like man it's so weird just singing and talking into this box yeah. <laughs> and not having yeah. a group of people yeah. to interact with exactly yeah there's there's definitely positives and negatives to it um the yeah i definitely feed off of like the audience when i'm playing um so that's made it strange um because you know you're just hearing yourself and nobody else you just see if at most you're seeing some other people's faces on a box like through the zoom calls and all that and at the very least it's just you looking at yourself <laughs> in a computer screen <laughs> so yeah it's weird i mean i'm used to singing and like really trying to put some emotion into some songs like I mean, that's what i do with uh, that songwriting and making my demos like i really try to put my all into it and so i can imagine myself in a space in front of you know a hundred or thousands of people uh but it's still, it's it's nothing like the real thing, um, as I'm assuming all the musicians out there can uh, agree. You know, being in front of a live audience and having that sound just scream through the speakers out into the audience, that's a whole different thing. Um, so yeah, it's been a little awkward, but at, at the same time, like I said, you, I mean, you just got to sit in front of your computer and then you're back home after the show so it, there are some positives to it <laughs> so i don't have to drive you know two hours to a venue get sound checked uh, and do that all here in my pajamas so there's some positives there's some negatives i think the negatives outweigh the positives but we you know we're working with what we got and that's uh that's all right totally man yeah Cool. Well, uh, you have anything else you want to add before we wrap things up? Um, I think I mean, you're probably going to shoot this off to some people that are going to be listening or watching or something like that. Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you <laughs> can, people can f uh, find me on Spotify, Instagram, Facebook. My last name is spelled S-J-O-S-T-R-O-M, uh, Tyler Showstrom. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram. It's just at Tyler Showstrom um, and all that stuff. You know, I'm, I'm hoping to post more videos. I've been doing some cover songs lately and uh, hopefully posting some updates on the album. Um, I have a lot of EDM releases coming out. Those are silly and fun. Uh, but I'm definitely excited for, for my solo album to be coming out. Um, so I'll be, I'll be posting updates as soon as they come in. Um, and yeah, if you want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. So you can do uh, go to patreon.com uh, forward slash T-Y-S-J-O. And basically with my Patreon, um, I give you basically at the very, the, the basic, I think it's like a $10, $5 subscription every month. I give you two like unreleased song concepts that I'm working on at the very least. And then 
a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So you can see how I like kind of put together music and um, updates and all of that. So yeah, there's a lot of ways that you, and, and don't just support me. There's a lot of artists out there that need, you know, your support, and even in the smallest ways of just following them, just giving them some numbers so that, yeah, uh, you know, they're feeling like people are listening and, and appreciating their art. So yeah. And thank you. Thanks for putting this together. And this is your time that you're setting aside to help out some creatives. And it's, it really, really is appreciated. And I'm sure that all the, the musicians, the artists that are going to be a part of this will agree. This is, this is really cool, especially cause you, I mean, you're not getting on anything out of it other than I'm sure you like the music that comes out of these, these folks. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's terribly appreciated. Um, I'm sure both for the artists and then people that are wanting music. So thank you. We appreciate it. No. Yeah. Thank you, man. You know, I, I just, I think about music and how much of my life is, has been affected by music and it's just, I can't, I can't imagine my life without music. And, uh, Luckily, I've got friends who, <laughs> who feel the same way, who want, you know, are willing to donate their time and talents and stuff and uh, yeah. help make stuff like this happen. But um, yeah, that's what it's all about. Just, you know, I think helping each other out, especially during right. this time. It's like we're all in this together. We're all you yeah. know, trying to figure out what is going to be next and how to deal with it. And yeah, how to do the things that we love still, you know, and uh it's just a challenge and here we are. So, yeah, well, you definitely are up for the challenge. It sounds like, and, and, uh, you're doing a great job. So Try, thanks man. again, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, Tyler, I'm going to shut this off and, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Yes, sir.